Well, hello everyone. And don't worry, this is the kind of uh, comedy that is organic. Gluten, gluten free? Gluten is this, free. Is this on? No. Come on. Okay. It's not on yet. Wait, wait, wait for, for it. it. I'm just gonna stand here for 10 minutes and so I'll, stare. I'll fill it in. I heard this joke all the time. And it kind of leads to what David's been talking about this um, kind of scientism, this religion. So there's this little girl, she's about 10, she's on a plane, and she's reading her book. And uh, this PhD you know, physicist comes down and sits next to her and notices this girl reading this like, science book, the biology book. She says, wow, I'm just trying to get someone like a conversation going on. So she breaks it up and says, you know, little girl. Yeah, a great way to kick off my set, eh? Right on, right on. Good fun. So I'm a little, I'm a little nasally right now. Caught a bit of a cold, but don't worry. I'm gonna go get a bunch of uh, antibiotics and my flu shot after, so no one needs to stress. <laughs> so I work at the the light cellar. It's a great place to work. It's kind of hard to uh, explain to people where I work. You know, like Tom. Well, what do you do? I'm like, oh, well, I sell herb and mushrooms. Like, uh, so. So you're a drug dealer? Uh, well, not quite. Like, also sell sauerkraut. It's like, oh, I didn't know sauerkraut got you high. Well, I guess like there is a big connection from the gut to the brain. So if you balance out the gut flora, helps with your perception. So, yeah, kind of. <laughs> like, so if I eat a lot of it, like I'll feel, I'll feel it. Yeah, you know, your immune system will go up, and you'll have great poops. So, <laughs> you'll definitely feel it. So I, I used to work at uh, Miss Green's, which is like Planet Organic, and um, it, was a, it was okay, but management always wanted me to greet people the same way when they were coming in. I got sick of it, you know, so I started asking people my own questions. This older, this older lady came in, and I'm like, hey, so when you die, if you see the light, are you going to go into the light, or are you going to wait it out to see what else happens? She just looks at me, and she's like, I just came to get some kale. This is a lot. This other guy came in. I'm like, hey man, do you think the soul is androgynous or do you think it's polarized to his sexuality? He's like, uh, I was like, wait, wait, do you remember where you were before you were here? He's like, man, I got six mouths at home to feed. I, can't, I don't got time to think about that shit. <laughs> so, uh, David Wolf here, big fan. Uh, it's been a great weekend. Little known fact about David Wolf is. Uh, the avocado was actually named after him, so I could take that home with <laughs> you. Uh, so something about myself that you may not know is actually I'm a connoisseur of sorts. Uh, I'm a connoisseur of finely genetically modified products. <laughs> Some of my favorite include 1996 Monsanto Roundup Ready Soybean. It is delicious. Tastes like cardboard, destroys your liver and your, your gut flora. It's fantastic. Another one is 1999 or 1998 Monsanto Roundup Ready corn. It's delicious. The high fructose, high fructose corn syrup is just wonderful. You just put that on everything. That's some nutritional tips for all of you. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm working in a super, super food store. Uh, I was doing some research. I came across some cutting edge nutrition. Uh, it's called Super Duper Foods. <laughs> See, the duper is actually the nutritional component. Long chain polysaccharides. <laughs> but see, you have to be careful that you don't take too much, because if you take too much, it can actually cause Benjamin Button disease because it's reverse aging. <laughs> so I, I gave some to my grandpa. He's 80. He woke up and he was four years old. So was, you have to be careful. So uh, I, uh, I bought a van, 
and I'm living in my van right now, so I'm technically homeless, kind of, but I'm having fun, you know. I spent a lot of time just thinking in my van about things, and I was thinking the other day, like, why do we call it the human race, you know? Has anyone seen the finish line? I, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm thinking about pulling out of the human race. I think before, I think, yeah, I feel like I've been part of the race for about four years now. Before that, I think I was part of the human loiter. Just getting drunk and kicking over garbage cans with my friends. Before that, I was part of the human mooch with my parents, so just taking stuff, just wanting more and more and more. I was, a little, I was a pain in the ass. If my mom cut my toast the wrong way, I won't eat it. I won't eat rectangles, just triangles. Very particular about my geometry and <laughs> nutrition. Uh, so I went, to, uh, I went to a bar the other day to try to pick up this girl with a magic trick that I didn't know how to do. Uh, turned out fantastic, she vanished. <laughs> Apparently I'm quite the magician. So I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of uh, TV, even the word like television, tell a vision. Like we'll tell you your vision and you just sit there, uh, just pumping ideas in your head. It's garbage. One thing that really annoys me is uh, toilet paper commercials. It's all the same. It's all the same shit. Dare I say? <laughs> but yeah, it's always the same thing, though, right? It's always like fluffy animals rolling around the toilet paper, and these people are being like, "Oh, our toilet paper is as soft as these small fluffy animals," you know? And I'm sick of it, but like, I gotta wipe my butt with something. Sick of supporting these guys, so I've decided I'm gonna start using the cats. Instead of the toilet paper. So my friends come over and they're like, Tom, why is your bathroom full of cats? I'm like, well, I'm trying to reduce my waste, reduce my carbon footprint, you know, trying to save the world. What are you doing, huh? Plus, it's easy, just a bunch of cat food and some roofies, put it on the lawn, and okay. On a side note, why is toilet paper white like it's this blank canvas you're about to put this masterpiece on? You know? Because they bleach it, they don't need to do that. You know, I show all your friends, I put on the fridge, oh. I call this one the day I ate beets. It's, it's artistic. Other, sh other shows like Chef Ramsay's and his cooking competition shows, I find this guy a piece of work the way he treats people, hey? Screaming at people, you know, in the competition. Like, oh, you're such a piece of shit, you're brutal. Because you didn't put enough salt on the potatoes. It's like, relax, man. Like, cooking's supposed to be tasty, you know? It's supposed to be a fun time, you know? But people are, people are like, oh, no, he's such a good chef, you know, with the oils and spices. It's like, oh, yeah, what does his food taste like? Fear and hate? <laughs> like, oh, Chef Ramsay's created this succulent roast with a side of egomaniac and verbal abuse, you know? You taste it. It's fantastic. I'm gonna go hit my kids. <laughs> so uh, I was feeling blue the other day, just kind of had the weight of the world on my shoulders, watching too much news, I guess, and some financial troubles. And so I went to go hang out with my friend, he's a yoga teacher. And we're hanging out, and I'm telling him this, and he's like, See, Tom, don't worry, because see, nothing's real. This is all an illusion. So I punched him in the face and I took his wallet. <laughs> it helped my financial situation. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was hanging out with my other friend, and uh, he's big into psychedelics. He's like, you know, you're always trying to push the boundaries of, of reality and what you can experience, and we're hanging out, and he's, he's like, Tom, like, I've come to the ultimate conclusion of reality. I was like, oh, shit, like, peak experience kind of thing. Okay, like, what, are, what kind of insights do you have to offer? He's like, I've come to the conclusion that I am the only person that's real. You're all part of my imagination. You are me. I am God. I was like, no, nah, man, that can't be true. That's impossible. We all have our own, we're all part of our own story. He's like, no, nah, man, that's the truth. So I thought about it, and then I just started beating him up. He's like, why are you doing this to me? He's like, you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> um, so a little about me is uh, I went to university, majored in conspiracy theories, modern marijuana. It was a great one and a half year program. I really learned it a lot. One of the big theories going on around right now is uh, the flat earth theory. 
You know, lots of people are convinced that the Earth is flat. And you're like, man, that's, that's crazy. We've disproven that theory hundreds of years ago with sound science and mathematics. And then, well, shit, man, I don't know. Like, I've never walked around the Earth in a straight line to see if I finished where I started. Every time I go outside, everything's so flat. I've never been to space to see the Earth before. <laughs> What if, because a particle can also be a wave, then the Earth could be flat or spherical, depending on the observer? Like, what if you were traveling at the speed of light towards planet Earth? Like, what would it look like? Oh, shit. That's a good weed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's flat or not. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so... I was thinking, who was the last person to realize that like getting stoned didn't mean being murdered by rocks anymore? You know? <laughs> I feel like that would have been a confusing conversation. Like, how'd it go? You know? It's like, oh, I was with I was with Bill last night, and yeah, Bill got stoned. Oh shit. <laughs> well, is, is he okay? Oh yeah, he's fine. He just got stoned. Well, well, like, like who stoned him? Like, what happened? Uh, he, he did it to himself. Well, is he, is he alive? Like, I, I don't understand. Yeah, he's fine. He just got stoned. He was freaking out about the Illuminati and chemtrails and shockers and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Uh, I wouldn't want to... There's a big difference between getting stoned in Canada and getting stoned in Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't want to get stoned in Saudi Arabia. You could get stoned for being stoned in Saudi Arabia. That's no fun. I feel like that conversation would be confusing too, you know? Like, oh... Oh, my friend, he was stoned last night. Oh, sweet, like hashish or what? No, he died. <laughs> All right, I got one more, and then I'll pass the mic off to the man. Um, this is a story about uh, the light seller, actually. I was working there one day, and I found a bag of cocaine on the floor. Yeah. I was working at the till, and... You know, this guy, I buying some stuff, bought some sauerkraut, some pine pollen, medicinal mushrooms. And he leaves, and I walk around the till, and I see this little bag of white powder. And I pick it up, and I show my friend. I was like, look at this. He's like, what's that? He's like, it looks like drugs. He's like, let's figure it out. I was like, all right. <laughs> so he took some, and he rubs it on his hand. He's like, if it's cocaine, my hand will start to go numb. And then he just licks his hand. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll be able to figure this out pretty quick. So I go to help a customer. Two minutes later, he comes over, pulls me aside. He's like, yeah, definitely cocaine, definitely cocaine. My whole face is numb. This is really good coke. I'm going to get a lot of work done. I'll see you later. And runs off. And so he runs off, and I'm just, just like, okay. And this lady comes up to me, and she's like, wow, that man has lots of energy and vitality. Like, what nutritional supplements is he taking? And I'm like, oh, it's this new stuff from South America. It's called cocaine. <laughs> She's like, how much is it? I was like, 80 bucks a gram. <laughs> so I sold it to her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't sell it to her. It's a joke. What she really did need is some coca leaf. But unfortunately, that's a schedule one too, which is insane. I don't know, this war on drugs is kind of confusing. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's lots of drugs that should be illegal and controlled, but, you know, all the plants, doesn't make sense, you know, a war on plants, it's silly. It's a war on medicine, which is a war on direct experience, which is a war on knowledge. I mean, we, we, should, we should grow up, right? But anyway, that's my bit. I'm uh, going to let David Wolf come back on, and thanks everyone for listening. <laughs>